lake, and it's going to, all of this land here is going to be completely underwater. This is my daughter, Serena. She's visiting Lake Onslow and learning all about it. I've heard a bit about it over the years, but there's more for me to learn. <laughs> I think it was a high moment, actually. It was uh, something of an eye-opener. It's not, not normal for a country to have a beautiful situation like that in terms of ability to store energy. A hundred years ago, a prophecy was made about this valley and the streams, now flowing idly through remote valleys, will be compelled to perform their share of labour. One hundred and seventy thousand tonnes of concrete. First at Waitaki, then at Lake Tekapo, then at Pukaki, and now New Zealand's biggest at Ben Moore. Transmission lines radiate across the land. A lot of New Zealand's hydropower is located in a relatively small geographical region. So if we have a, even a localised drought, that can have national implications. We cannot keep burning uh, either fossil gas or coal as a way to store energy. We have to solve this question of how we store energy. I was always looking for possibilities by which we might get alternative means of storage away from our scenic natural lakes. So that's when I first started thinking about the Onslow Basin. The idea is that we could raise this lake maybe some 60 metres or more above its present level and that would give us an enormous amount of energy storage. What it amounts to is that we're using Lake Onslow as a battery. So when the prices are low and there's plenty of water around, we'll pump water up into the lake and when there's a dry year, we'll have all this potential energy available which we can run back down to the Clutha River and by running it back down we can generate 1,000 megawatts and that means that we can do away with fossil fuel as a source of energy during dry years, so we can be 100% renewable electricity. How will the water get up here? Well, we could construct a big tunnel, about 16 kilometres long. The height of Onslow was a big advantage because it was so far above the Clutha River, and in addition you could store a considerable volume of water up there. So the combination of the water storage volume and the height above the Clutha River meant, in fact, that you could have the potential energy up there equal to all the hydro lakes that New Zealand put together. Well, it was 2002 when I first started thinking about it. And uh, then in 2020, I got a, a call coming through from the Office of the Minister of, of Energy mentioning that they were going to be making a large, um, significant announcement. The actual idea of Lake Onslow and a specific pumped hydro project, that of course came through in the Interim Independent Climate Commissioner's report. But of course what we have to do now is to test that, to look at not only the hydrology but also the ecology, to work out whether actually this is technically feasible. What would the negatives be? The main negative is that we'll be losing um, some very well known wetlands. One of the oppositions to it is the wetlands. Absolutely, and that's something that, that we're really aware of. The other key group that is part of this is the lo local runaka, in terms of what the cultural significance of that area is as well. What about the farmers? Yeah, that, well, hopefully the farmers can be compensated, um, but in terms of the, we just, we're losing some farmland for sure. These, these little fishermen huts will, will have to be moved 
uh, when, when the dam uh, construction of the lake gets much higher, of course. Oh, I'm local here all my life. Uh, been coming up here for 30 years, fishing. What's the fishing like? Yeah, real good. You might catch 10, you might catch 20 for the day, you know, but they've put a limit on it now, you're only allowed 10. <laughs> but I was sort of told, see where that black tank is on the hill there? That's about roughly how high it's going to be. Yeah, that'll be about right. Wow, we Renewable. need it, you know, we've got electric cars now. Renewable. All those Aucklanders and Wellingtons will put the electric cars plugged in at five o'clock. <laughs> You've got to get the power from somewhere, don't you? Look, this will be a game changer. Not only will it allow us to decarbonise, not only get to that 100% uh, renewable electricity system, but more broadly across our energy system. If the electricity prices are lower and they can be guaranteed to stay low, then it makes sense to switch to, to electricity in terms of your, your requirement for industry. An example could be the, the dairy industry and production of milk powder, which uses a lot of energy. And so if we use that energy bot from electricity as opposed to, for example, coal, then that, that's better for the whole country. The questions that we have to answer, how does it alter the, the market? And I guess the question of who's going to own it is always going to be front and centre. Are power companies likely to be a gimmick? Look, and I mean, I guess that's a question for them. Uh, but our job as government is to make sure that we're adequately preparing for New Zealand's future. It would be good to see the whole thing go ahead and we'll change the New Zealand energy scene for the next 50 years. Well done, Mr. Bartow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>